Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Ty Davis. I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about agile project management using GitLab. We'll also be touching a little bit on SAFE, Scaled Agile Framework, and how you can set up the structure if your organization is looking to align themselves with the uh, SAFE framework. We'll touch on a few slides here first before getting into the demo. And then once we get into the demo, we'll start looking at how we built out an agile structure with our, uh, our, our mock organization, healthcare provider incorporated. When we take a look at the structure of GitLab, we have groups and projects. Groups will be at the highest level. So you can look at a group as you'll have one group as the parent group or the umbrella group. And then there'll be subgroups that can fall underneath that. There could be subgroups under those subgroups, but when we're looking to do Agile at this top layer, at this group level, uh, we have the ability to have access to epics, milestones, which is uh, a time box in GitLab terminology. So you can build out sprints, you can build out releases using uh, the milestones feature. There's a roadmap, which is going to uh, show you a compilation of um, all the epics and the timelines associated with them. And then you have the ability to create labels, uh, boards, and projects that fall underneath those groups or subgroups. So we see here, when we're talking projects, that uh, project resides within that group um, level or layer. Uh, that, that project, there could be a project associated with uh, one group, and then there could be a subgroup underneath that group, and that can have its own projects as well. So once I have a project, you see that there's uh, your Git repository. Um, issues and discussion can happen at that project level. Uh, labels are also um, built into that project so you can have specific labels for that project where uh, maybe that team is using um, identifiable or, or a specific naming convention for those labels and they can build out their own boards as well uh, create milestones which may uh, maybe associate that with a sprint or doing scrum um, or just a a release a start and an end date and then as well uh, you have cycle analytics that can give you insight on that project when we're talking Agile and the way that, that GitLab uh, has its, its, its names for, for what we've built inside of our tool, um, we call issues, um, or we call user stories issues, or for people that are familiar with issues already, you could just keep moving along with issues. But uh, some people are familiar with user stories, we call that an issue. Again, reiterating what I said earlier about milestones this is a, uh, something that you can build out of time box. Um, in this particular case, for uh, if we're doing Scrum, um, we built out sprints using that milestone capability. So within that project, you have a repository. Uh, the repository is a very powerful capability as part of GitLab. It's uh, something that we're very well known for. Inside that repository, you have the ability to do um, merge request, you can make changes, you can have reviews and discussions around those MRs, uh, you can do approvals, uh, you have visibility into your uh, CIC pipeline, so if we're looking to have visibility along uh, the end-to-end -end DevOps, we can see uh, the status of um, code change when it comes to quality, when it comes to security, when it comes to performance, uh, you have that capability uh, inside of the repository and, and specifically with merge request and identifying uh, pipelines that associate with that merge request. You also have the ability to do a review app. So once you've added that code, you can uh, review the app before it goes live to production. And like I mentioned, you have um, security scans uh, that give full reports back on any vulnerabilities that are detected, um, whether they're me uh, like medium or severe. Um, you'll have that review and report given to you around that merge request. When we look at GitLab and Scaled Agile Framework, if your organization is looking to move towards SAFE, you are going to be able to align um, via what we just talked about, the groups and the projects. Uh, how we look at it is uh, for that, maybe that if we're looking at portfolio SAFE and we're looking at that portfolio level, uh, that, that high group, that top parent group or umbrella group is going to be at the portfolio level. Uh, there's going to be a subgroup that aligns with the value stream and then a second subgroup that aligns with the program. And then we could see that 
you know, there's possibly, uh, depending on how large the Agile teams are that are contributing towards that Agile release train, um, there could be a, a third subgroup if it's just a, a couple of uh, Scrum teams that are all added together that contribute to an Agile team as a whole that's contributing towards that Agile release team. But a lot of that work is going to be done at the project level. We could see here, that's where we consider the team level. That's where you're going to create many boards, issues, um, user stories are going to be created in there. And that's where we're going to have a lot of our, our, our dev work and testing done. Breaking it down a little bit more, we look at that portfolio level. So we're looking at that uh, top group level. Maybe it's the maybe it's a, a, an application that's part of an organization. Maybe it's the whole organization that's at that group level. And we'll see in the demo here uh, the healthcare provider. It's a smaller healthcare provider organization, but the the enterprise is represented um, at that portfolio level, and they're going to build out value streams that align with where they want their healthcare organization to be headed towards. So when we look at the portfolio level and doing safe, uh, we create those portfolio epics at that group level. Uh, we create labels. Uh, the way we look at strategic themes is that when your business leaders are deciding what are the strategic themes that are going to drive this organization, um, that's going to be done via group labels. So in, in the case of this healthcare organization, maybe it's um, satisfied patients, satisfied employees, um, modernizing technology or being innovative. Um, they're going to create those strategic themes via labels. And then when we create those portfolio epics, we're going to, uh, we're going to tag those strategic themes that align with that portfolio epic. You can create a project um, on that high, uh, that, that portfolio group level so that you could create um, maybe non-functional uh, user stories issues. Uh, there could be discussion around those. Um, that's going to drive that backlog. Uh, that's going to drive um, the the epics that we are moving into progress at that portfolio level. A subgroup will be created um, at this portfolio level that's going to align with a value stream. We'll see again in the demo. Um, there's six value streams that uh, the the business leaders decided would drive the organization, and those are created in subgroups. So looking at that subgroup, uh, that value stream, uh, you have milestones. We talked about time box, which you can um, set the dates and time, um, start and end dates for that solution train that could be tracked via milestone, labels as well. Anything that aligns with that value stream, uh, you'll, you'll create the labels that uh, align with that. We'll see uh, how that's done once we get into um, the demo here. Again, there's, uh, you can always have a project at a group level. Um, it's not isolated to the, the lowest subgroup. It could be at um, different levels. It could be at the, the highest group level, so a group of that. Create project, and what this does is it allows you to have a, a board that is specific to that, that group level um, that will, you know, if we, we have that portfolio board, now we have this value stream board, maybe uh, moving into that program. Uh, level, you can have your Kanban board there, moving features and enablers along uh, that have been broken down from those portfolio epics. And we can see that here at the program level. Um, there's subgroups that are, are banking off of those value streams. Um, these are made up of a, a series of agile teams that are contributing towards an agile release train. Um, maybe several scrum teams that make up for that agile team uh, that are all working together to push um, uh, releases out uh, at a, a regular and frequent cadence on that Agile release train. Pushing out working software, making sure that they all work together. Something that can be done um, at that subgroup to or subgroup level where we have uh, an Agile team as a whole that, that may have another subgroup of, of um, Scrum teams that are contributing towards making that Agile release train go. Now we get to the team uh, team layer of SAFE. Um, this is where we're gonna have um, probably significant more amount of projects that are specific towards um, dev and testing. This is where your functional items are gonna be worked on. Uh, you're gonna have um, issues and discussion here. You're gonna have many, many issues uh, uh, specific around 
um, functionality, building out uh, code. And this is where we're going to compile that all here at the project level. We'll be able to do backlog management. We'll be able to do um, our PI planning. Um, actually, we'll do our, our PI planning at the program level. And this is where um, from that PI planning, we'll take our PI objectives, break those down into issues, and then, um, and then start working uh, on, on those issues. You have visibility into uh, the boards uh, when it comes to seeing you know, what's uh, in progress, what's being worked on, what's done. Uh, you can create uh, team boards seeing who's working on what. You can create that, that PI objective board and um, start assigning issues to sprints. We're doing our sprint planning or taking it from the product backlog, moving it to the appropriate sprint, and then doing that uh, assignment uh, of issues to um, that sprint where either if you have a self-organizing team, they can pull those issues off, they can assign them to themselves, or if maybe you're a, an organization that has a scrum master um, or a product manager that's doing the assigning, um, they can do that as well. Uh, this is where that repository we talked about is going to reside inside those projects. That's where our merge requests are going to be done. You're going to see changes. You're going to have um, reviews and discussion done at that. So that collaboration piece is going to be done here. Uh, where I have visibility into the changes that you've made to code, I can comment on them. We can collaborate and say, "Hey, this looks good. This looks, you know, this doesn't look good. What'd you do here? What I do here?" Um, and it, it gives us that tie-in around collaboration around all these code changes that we're making. Uh, we can see the pipeline passed or failed. We can also collaborate on that. Hey, uh, this is what I saw in the code. This is why it failed. And if you want to change that, um, and then we have visibility again into uh, the security part, the performance of uh, of those pipelines, and then you have a review app. You can see the changes and see um, how it looks on um, your application before it goes to production. Something else that uh, along the co collaboration piece uh, via email, via um, uh, uh, Slack, via what matter most, um, you can uh, also collaborate using those tools and add issues to the backlogs. This is a, a very detailed um, view at, at GitLab Safe. Um, you can see there's different, at the highest level, the portfolio group that's a subgroup of the program, um, agile teams that are following as another subgroup of those value streams. Each, each level has its own project where um, issues can be created, whether they're non-functional or functional. Um, more, once you get towards the, the team, subgroups this is where uh, your projects are going to have more functional items that are being driven uh, more along the functionality of uh, the applications or the software that's being created this is just another quick snapshot into the portfolio looking at the value streams that could be associated with it so now moving on this is the end of the, the slides real quick. Uh, I, I hope I got through them pretty quickly here for you. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the demo and start looking at how you could structure uh, your organization's um, agile planning or scaled agile framework using GitLab. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. And if uh, there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask at the end of this or put it in the comment section of YouTube and we will be sure to respond uh, as quickly as possible uh, around um, any uh, questions that you may have. So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at uh, what's a mock organization or mock company. We've created, it's a healthcare provider incorporated. This is a, a healthcare company that has uh, different parts or different um, value streams uh, in safe terminology that make up the organization. In this case, there may be a newer uh, healthcare provider when you see some of the issues that are built around, but this is just for demo purposes. But healthcare provider, they are uh, very experienced or they are experienced in uh, agile. Uh, they are doing scrum planning, uh, pardon me, they're doing scrum. Um, they're using uh, the GitLab backlog to do their backlog management. And they've just started looking into Scaled Agile Framework are doing safe, and they are now structuring their organization around the Scaled Agile Framework. 
for this organization when they're going towards safe, uh, what they've done is you have uh, uh, business leaders that agreed at a high level what the strategic themes are for that organization, and those strategic themes for this hospital organ, or excuse me, this healthcare organization is patient satisfaction, revenue growth, staff satisfaction, and technology advancements. And they've done this using labels with GitLab. So when I'm creating my portfolio epics or I'm creating my value streams, um, they, uh, uh, pardon me, when I'm creating my portfolio epics, I can tie that to a strategic theme. So if I were to go over and take a look at the epics that were created from those strategic themes um, at the portfolio uh, level, I am going to be able to see that I've tagged using the strategic theme or using the, uh, the specific strategic theme that's been assigned to them that we came up with these six different portfolio epics at that, pro, uh, at that portfolio level that we believe will drive uh, our organization. Um, what will happen is these portfolio epics can be taken and, in, and broken down into features or enablers and then thus broken down um, more into issues from there. They can be part of... Uh, um, uh, PI planning where uh, we take those um, features enablers uh, we break them down like I just mentioned into issues and then we create PI objectives out of those now again this is just demo data so we have uh, only a few listed here but if we were to look at a real organization there'd be uh, probably quite a few more portfolio epics going back and looking at uh, the healthcare provider uh, organization instead of GitLab we have groups and projects that's how we structure so this is at the highest group level. Uh, you could call this the parent group or the umbrella group, uh, the highest level uh, where the healthcare provider organization or enterprise sits. And then following underneath those is a subgroup. So you have uh, six different subgroups in this particular case. Um, these are uh, what would be considered value streams for a scaled agile framework. Uh, these were determined by the leadership that these are the value streams that are gonna drive this organization. So we have primary care, online experience, specialists, laboratory, pharmacy, and hospital. Uh, the portfolio management piece, that's just a project that sits um, at that portfolio level so I can uh, create some issues uh, at that portfolio level that may be specific to that portfolio management, um, possibly non-functional uh, items or issues that need to be created. Diving a little bit more into one of the value streams here, so we dive into the hospital value stream. Uh, we can see that's made up of uh, six different Agile groups. These are groups that are contributing towards that Agile release train that's uh, part of that value stream for uh, that hospital value stream. Uh, these six groups or six Agile teams all have Scrum teams underneath them um, that are, are, are contributing or are, are working together to contribute towards that Agile team that's part of that Agile release train. And so we can look at billing here and see that we have several different Scrum teams that we've put together. Uh, around employee payroll, patient billing, vendor billing, and 501c3 billing. And these are all groups that are working together um, to build out that, that feature and capabilities around billing um, that are all going to combine together with uh, the, the different ones that you see here, inbound patient records, staff scheduling, and outbound. When we go into billing, uh, I could take a look at the epics that are part of billing, and I could see that um, what we call... Uh, epics at GitLab or these would be considered sub epics because you've already seen those portfolio epics that sat at that healthcare provider uh, uh, parent level. Um, these are sub epics uh, interchangeable with the feature terminology or enablers uh, for a scaled agile framework. framework. Um, but these are what we broke down from those portfolio epics. And so uh, you can see here that some of them are broken down into specific um, uh, insurance companies, the specific uh, uh, features or sub epics around billing statements and um, adding payment methods. And these are where you're going to have uh, groups take a look at these features, these enablers, um, and they're going to go into their PI planning sessions. They're going to break these down. They're going to um, get them, uh, they're going to get PI objectives out of these, which are going to be uh, made up of issues or user stories, if that's the terminology you're using inside of GitLab. We, uh, we go by issues. And so that will be uh, part of that PI objective that is uh, taken out of uh, the PI planning sessions. And when those, uh, those individuals that are associated or part of that uh, PI planning session are taking a look at these, these features at the billing level. From here, we can go over to issues. And this is where 
uh, we'll see issues that were are determined from uh, that that PI planning session. That's part of a, a you know specific PI objectives. Uh, we have a running list here of the issues that were created. I can go into the board view, and this is where I'm going to be able to see that there is a product backlog here or a a, a PI. Uh, backlog that has been created with issues. Um, I, I have the ability to do ranking so uh, I can drag and drop and this will rank these issues uh, as part of this board as a higher priority. If we went to a different board and wanted to see all the opens it would retain that, that ranking system. We also have technical risks that have been assigned to these so I, I do have a technical risk board that I could take a look at the high and medium low risk issues that have been determined and this would populate those uh, based off of uh, um, which issues have which uh, label shows associated with them. This has a filter on it now for Sprint 1, so we don't actually see any yet until we do go uh, assign issues to Sprint 1. Sorry, that's the Scrum Team Board. I'll go back to PI Objective. So that's where I can have a, a product owner or product manager or Scrum Master uh, they start assigning the, the specific and issues towards the sprints that they think are, um, excuse me, towards that sprint that they believe it should be prioritized. In this case, we have a couple different issues that I want to put over to um, sprint one. These were created organically uh, from uh, GitLab itself. Down here, we can see we have a couple different issues that were created. One was via a service desk. So someone submitted a ticket verse, uh, with a service desk that's built into uh, GitLab. And a couple others, one uh, was done via maybe uh, Slack or um, done via Mattermost, and those issues appeared on the backlog. So as I'm assigning these issues here, it's so moving over to Sprint 1. These are all the priority or the issues that I think are top priority for Sprint 1. I now have that Sprint backlog planned and I can go over to my dev board and begin moving issues into progress and either assigning those to individuals if you're an organization that's doing you know, product manager or a scrum master that's doing the assigning of issues or user stories that could be done or if you have a, a self-organizing team uh, doing scrum uh, they can come in here and they can pick issues that they want to work on so if I were to come in here um, probably as a patient I can view my billing statement that's very important in order for someone to pay for that that bill that they have. Um, I'm going to assign this to myself, so I've assigned it to myself, and I knew move it to in progress, and now I'm working on that. Same could be done for a couple others. Maybe Dan came in here, he assigned this to himself, he moves that to in progress. Um, same thing for John Jeremiah, he now assigns that to himself and moves that to in progress. Built in is uh, you have weights that you can associate with those uh, issues. And so you can see here, there's a couple different weights, 15 and 15, both for these issues that Dan and John have. Uh, I have eight as part of my weight. Um, four, you know, in terms of story points, maybe you're using a Fibonacci scale or you have your own system built into your organization. Uh, you could do that using issues as part of, um, sorry, you could do that using weights as part of these issues and then Later on, we'll see that you could take out uh, in a burn down chart where you are progressing with that issue weight and issues and uh, look at the anticipated um, projection for what you were looking to have done uh, as part of that, that specific sprint or time box, whatever you may call it. So uh, I'm working on this. You know, I, I complete, the, I build up my code, write my code as a patient. I can view a billing statement. I think it's good for review now. Uh, you may be able to, or you, your organization may uh, use different uh, terminology around what stages it should, it should move in. Maybe there's an end testing. You can build that out using labels and then uh, edit these boards and, re or, uh, and, and organize these boards using those labels. For us, it's review. I've moved it to review. There's a close over here. Maybe my review, uh, it needs to have a successful pipeline. It needs to pass you know, certain tests, uh, certain quality tests, certain security tests or performance tests before it can be moved to closed. But in the meantime, um, you know, we are an agile team, so I, I should hopefully get that feedback rather quickly. But I want to go ahead and just take another item or another issue off of that backlog that was assigned to Sprint 1, assign that to myself, 
and then I can begin that work on that issue and it moves in in progress and progress tag is added there so maybe as a scrum master or product manager I want a high level view of what's going on the team or who's you who's working on what I can come over here to this team board view I can see what Dan's working on what John's working on I can see what Ty's working on he has one in review he has one in progress that's good he doesn't have two in progress uh, we, we'd rather have Ty working on one uh, item in progress and not working on multiple so that's in review and hopefully that moves to close we can now look at that technical risk board we can see that because I had a filter around sprint one and we did the assigning of these issues to sprint one I could see what is a high risk what is a medium risk uh, we have no low risk in sprint one it just gives me a snapshot here based uh, on that risk level that we've created via labels. So heading over to milestones here, uh, this is where we at GitLab define uh, our time box. In this particular case, you know, I'm trying to look towards aligning towards uh, the Scaled Agile framework. So I've created four sprints and an innovation and planning sprint as my fifth sprint over two week increment. So uh, adding up to uh, 10 total sprints as part of a, a PI ob uh, objective that we're working on. And so you have the ability to change these names based on what your organization does uh, and, and the time box that you're labeling those. But we do call these milestones at GitLab. That's the terminology that we use when you have that option available here on the left. I could pop into Sprint 1. This is where I'm going to have visibility into uh, a burn down chart because this is demo data and I've been moving stuff back and forth it's going to have a a little bit of a a, a strange uh, graph to it line to it right now I can see the issues that I've created the issue weight that comes along with that um, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to cut over and we'll take an actual look into a, a real uh, real life um, uh, burn down chart and board that our own dev team around Verify is doing. So we could see here the open and deliverable and close. That's the way that they go about doing Agile is using those uh, or that terminology. And I can go to the milestone here and see uh, for the milestone of 11.7 what they've been doing. And this one just ended, but we could see that there's a certain amount of issues created. We could see uh, with the issue weight and the burn down chart that they've gone along with that. A little bit of flatlining here. Um, but the ability to use burn down charts inside of GitLab based around that, that sprint or uh, the milestone that you create in GitLab. So coming back here to uh, the board view inside of issues, just want to kind of show that you can uh, maybe from the dev board, um, even though we've, we've probably hopefully worked out what issues are part of this uh, sprint, backlog or what's part of this PI objective excuse me and um, I can uh, uh, um, I can go ahead and just if I if for some reason I needed to add a new issue I can do that in line here or if I needed to uh, add an issue I'd head over to the project within billing so I'd find the different scrum groups uh, probably inside of patient billing is what we're looking at I could see that there's two projects here projects fall at any point could fall underneath the group and the way that we've set it up those projects um, that's a container for where all the dev works being done um, this is showing that the billing statements and credit card payments those are two different projects that the the scrum team around patient billing is working on so I can go into billing statements here um, get inside that project take a look at the issues um, go to the board, see what issues are associated here. I can add an issue from uh, this area. Um, oops. I can add an issue here from the list view. And what it's going to do, it's going to take me over uh, to the new issue creation uh, page. And this is where I can add a test. I can give it a description. I can assign it to myself or I can assign it to a certain member that's part of the team assign it to a milestone you can see several different sprints here um, and I can also uh, give it a label you know if it's associated with an agile release you have multiple trains um, in progress uh, which you probably want to do unless you're moving that into progress on the board uh, but you can see the different tags that are associated with there give it a wait and then also if you wanted to give it a due date uh, you can do that as well markdown and quick actions are supported inside of these so 
um, if I click on a markdown, it takes me to a nice little GitLab um, help markdown area, but you can uh, do markdown inside of this description. There's a lot of uh, different um, options and choices um, available for doing markdown, you know, just adding maybe uh, an issue to an epic or um, associating two issues together, just using markdown. That possibility is here. I'm not going to submit an issue in this particular case. So now we're here on the page of issues that uh, are, are specific to the billing statements group. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the next step and uh, us moving along that agile planning, us moving um, this issue that is maybe a, a problem or it's an enhancement request, uh, something that we've created as an issue. And now we're going to have uh, that, that dev team members begin working on it. They're going to create a merge request around this. They're going to check out uh, a branch to work on from the master branch. And so what they're going to do is they're going to go in and they're going to create a merge request. We can see that I've already created a merge request as part of this issue. Um, and they, they simply just create a merge request from that issue. Uh, inside that issue, it's going to put the related merge request uh, for that issue. I'm going to click into this one that I've already created. And it's going to show me a couple of different things here um, that I get along once I've created this merge request. Now, uh, I'm just going to give a quick high-level view of, of merge request and the DevOps uh, pipeline. There's uh, many demos that we've created that dive a little bit deeper into um, how this pipeline works or maybe specific around the security or specific around uh, performance. Um, and those can be found on our YouTube channel. But I'm just going to give a a quick view um, as we started with the agile planning we've created those issues we've assigned them um, what we're doing now is we have that dev person um, working on the kill uh, correcting the code or creating code they've created that merge request uh, taking a branch off of master uh, and now um, in this particular case uh, the the um, changes have already been pushed in this one uh, they've been pushed sorry not pushed, but these changes have been made and now we're running a pipeline and the pipeline is doing its uh, checks on these different stages. So it just did the build and pass, and now it's doing a test. Um, we can see the different stages that are correlated with that. We'll dive into this in a little bit more here in a second. Um, down here, we can go and actually see what changes were made. Uh, in this particular case, there's some uh, text that was changed around the just the header there. Um, this is a very, very, very simple demo. Um, <clears throat> so. Once we go into this pipeline, we can now see laid out in front of us um, all the different checkpoints as part of these stages. I can see code quality, code quality um, container scanning, dependency scanning, license management, um, static security testing, uh, and then maybe just a, a unit or quality testing that we built in there. Uh, a review app will be built out so we'll be able to see the changes that were made before we push that to the the master branch, there's dynamic security that we have along with this, a performance stage, and then a cleanup at the end. So this pipeline is going to take a, a few uh, minutes to run here um, as it's doing all of its uh, checkpoints. Um, something that's going to happen, you know, once once that hopefully passes, if it fails, we'll have the ability to go in and see um, why it failed. It'll give us a, a, a um, a failed pipeline area where we could see um, specifically what part of that pipeline failed we can address that from there um, but if this does pass and I'm hoping it does it's going to uh, give me that capability to merge into master branch in this particular case I have um, the um, capability or the uh, rights to do that merge myself if I needed approval I could add um, or that maintainer uh, someone can make uh, sure that uh, approval is required before it's merged into master. Um, this, if it passes, I'll be able to uh, resolve that work in progress and that'll give me the capability to merge. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go over, um, we're going to uh, check out a an open uh, merge request, actually not an open, we're going to look at one that was just merged, and that is the one I did just a little bit ago. Updated the text color for the title page. 
Um, we can see that the pipeline passed. It gives me a pass on all the stages. Um, it gave me a security analysis. I get a view. Uh, I can view the full report of all the new vulnerabilities. Um, again, dive that deeper in a different demo. Uh, it gives me a full report on license management. This one showed who it was merged by. The changes were merged into master, and it gives me it gives me a uh, a, a quick snapshot of what was done around this merge request and this pipeline. Uh, I've, I've already clicked merging it. You can see it's still working on deploying that to production right now. So it's um, going to again go and run that pipeline and push that um, to that that master branch. It should give me the result of uh, changing this title here to GitLab purple um, on top of this already purple background. Um, if I wanted to see the changes that were made with this again, I could take uh, take a look here. I could see that there was a color change around the, the header um, from orange to purple. Um, not the best choice I made, but again, this is the, the most basic app um, that we can do uh, just, just uh, for demo purposes. So uh, this demo basically has, has gone through. It's It started off with talking about agile planning. We've talked about um, how a company can use GitLab to do that agile planning, how they can start aligning to that scaled agile framework structure. Um, what we did here is we created issues. We did a lot of backlog management or uh, PI, PI objective uh, planning. We did our sprint backlogs, our PI objective backlogs, and we assigned those to members on the team. They began working on those. They uh, went inside these issues. They created uh, merge requests around the code that they've either changed or added. And then we see via these uh, pipelines that that code's getting tested. It's getting security testing done around. It's gonna be performance tested. Um, it, we're checking the licenses that are associated uh, with that, that branch that's being committed. And we're seeing several different things as part of that, that DevOps pipeline. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, again to um, go ahead and list them down on the YouTube channel. Comments there, we'll get back to you. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to take a look at GitLab and how you can apply this agile uh, methodology or, or apply safe using the GitLab tool.